one of the tasks you will do as a data engineer is to build a data pipeline basically you take data from multiple sources do some transformation in between and then load your data onto some target location now you can perform this entire operation using simple python script all you have to do is read data from some apis write your logic in between and then store your data onto some target location there is something called as a cron job so if you want to run your script at specific interval you can schedule it using cron job it looks something like this but here's the thing you can use cron job for let's say two to three scripts but what if you have hundreds of data pipelines we know that the 90 percent of the world's data was generated in just last two years and businesses around the world using this data to improve their product and services the reason you see the correct recommendation on your youtube page or the correct ads on your instagram profile is because of all of these data processing there are more than thousands of data pipeline running in these organization to make all of these things happen. So today we will understand how all of these things happen behind the scenes and we will understand one of the highly used data pipeline tool in the market called as Apache Airflow. So are you ready? Let's get started. At the start of this video, we talked about the cron job. As the data grows, we will have to create more and more data pipelines to process all of these data. What if something fails? What if you want to run all of these operation in specific order? So in data pipeline, we have multiple different operations coming. So one task might be to extract data from RDBMS, APIs or some other sources. Then the second step will aggregate all of these data and the third step will basically store this data onto some location. Now all of these operations should happen in specific sequence only. So we will have to make sure we schedule our cron job in such a way that all of these operations happen in proper sequence. Now doing all of this operation using simple Python script and managing them is a headache. You might need to put a lot of engineers on each and individual task to make sure everything runs smoothly. And this is where, ladies and gentlemen, Apache Airflow comes into the picture. In 2014, engineers at Airbnb started working on a project Airflow. It was bought into the Apache Software Incubator program in 2016 and became open source. That basically means anyone in the world can use it. It became one of the most viral and widely adopted open source projects. At over 10 million pip installed over a month, 200,000 GitHub star and approaching a Slack community over 30,000 users. Airflow became the integral part of big organizations around the world. The reason Airflow got so much popularity was not because it was funded or it had like good user interface or it was easy to install. The reason behind the popularity of Airflow was pipeline as a code. So before this we talked about right, we can easily write our data pipeline in simple python script but it becomes very difficult to manage. Now there are other options such as you can use the enterprise level tools such as Alteryx, Informatica but these softwares are very expensive and also if you want to customize based on your use case, you won't be able to do that. This is where the Airflow shines. It was open source so anyone can use it and on top of this it gave a lot of different features so if you want to build, schedule and run your data pipeline on scale you can easily do that using Apache Airflow. So now that we understood why Apache Airflow and why we really need it on the first place, let's understand what is Apache Airflow. So Apache Airflow is a workflow management tool. A workflow is like a series of tasks that needs to be executed in specific order. So talking about the previous example, we have data coming from the multiple sources. We do some transformation in between and then load that data onto some target location. So this entire job of extracting transformation and loading is called as a workflow. The same term technology is used in Apache Airflow but it is called as a DAG, Directed or Cyclic Graph. It looks something like this. At the heart of the Airflow is a DAG that basically defines the collection of different tasks and their dependency. This is the core computer science fundamental. Think of it as a blueprint for your workflow that defines the different tasks that should run in specific order. Directed means task moves in one direction. Acyclic means there are no loops, tasks do not run in circles. It can only move in one direction. And graph is a visual representation of different tasks. Now this entire flow is called as a DAG and the individual boxes that you see is called as a task. So the DAG defines the blueprint and the tasks are your actual logic that needs to be executed. So in this example, we are reading the data from external sources and API. Then we aggregate data and do some transformation and load this data onto some target location. So all of these tasks are executed in specific order. Once the first part is completed, then only second part will execute. And like this, all of these tasks will execute in specific orders. Now to create tasks, we have something called as an operator. Think of the operator as a function provided by the airflow. So you can use all of these different functions 
to create the task and do the actual work. There are many different types of operators available in Apache Airflow. So if you want to run the bash command, there is an operator for that called is a bash operator. If you want to call a Python function, you can use a Python operator. And if you want to send an email, you can also use the email operator. Like this, there are many different operators available for different types of job. So if you want to read data from PostgreSQL or if you want to store your data to Amazon S3, there are different types of operators that can make your life much more easier. So operators are basically the function that you can use to create tasks and the collection of different tasks is called as a DAG. Now to run this entire DAG, we have something called as an executors. Executors basically determines how your task will run. So there are different types of executors that you can use. So if you want to run your task sequentially, you can use the sequential executor. If you want to run your task in parallel in single machine, you can use the local executor. And then if you want to distribute your task across multiple machine, then you can use Celery executor. But this was a good overview of Apache Airflow. We understood why do we need Apache Airflow in the first place, how it became popular, and what are the different components in Apache Airflow that makes all of these things happen. So I will recommend the end-to-end -end project that you can do using Apache Airflow at the end of this video. But for now, let's do a quick exercise of Apache Airflow to understand different components in practice. So we understood the basics about Airflow and what are the different components that are attached to Airflow. Now let's look at the quick overview of what the Airflow UI really looks like and how these different components come together to build the complete data pipeline. Okay. So we already talked about DAG, right? So directed acyclic graph is a core concept in Airflow. Basically, a DAG is a collection of tasks that we already understood. So it looks something like this. The A is the task, B is the task, D is the task. And sequentially, it will execute and it will make the complete DAG. So let's understand how to declare a DAG. Now, it is pretty simple. You have to import few packages. So from Airflow, you import the DAG. And then there is an empty operator that basically does nothing. So with DAG, this is the syntax. So if you know the basics of Python, you can start with that. Now, if you don't have the Python understanding, then I already have the courses on Python. So you can check that out if you want to learn Python from the scratch so this is how you define the DAG with DAG then you give the name you give the start date so when you want to run this particular DAG and then you can provide the schedule so if you want to run daily weekly monthly basis you can do that and there are many other parameters that this DAG function takes so uh, based on your requirement you can provide those parameters and the DAG will run according to all of those parameters that you have provided so this is how you define the DAG and if you go over here you can use the empty operator uh, where you give the basically the task the task name or the id and you provide the DAG that you want to attach this particular task to so as you can see it over here we define the DAG and then we provide this particular DAG name to the particular task so if you are using the python operator or a bash operator all you have to do is use the function and provide the DAG name now just like this you can also create the dependencies so the thing that we talked about right i want to run my uh, all of these tasks in the proper sequence so as you can see i provide the first task and then you can use something like this and so what will happen the first task will run and it will execute the second and third task together after the third task completes the fourth task will be executed so this is how you create the basic dependencies now uh, this was just a documentation and you can always read about it if you want to learn more so let's go to our Airflow console and try to understand this better. Okay, once you install the Apache Airflow, it will look something like this. You will be redirected to this page and over here you will see a lot of things. So first is your DAG. These are the example DAGs that is provided by Apache Airflow. So if I click over here and if I go over here, you will see uh, this is the DAG which is basically contains one operator which is the bash operator. Just like this, if you click on to DAGs, you will see a lot of different examples if you want to understand how all of these DAGs are created from the backend. Over here, you will get the information about the different runs, if your DAG is currently queued, if it's success, running or failed. This will give you all of the different information about the recent task. So I can go over here, I can just enable this particular DAG, okay? I can go inside this and I can manually run this from the top, okay? So I will trigger the DAG and it will start running. So currently it is queued, now it starts running. And if I go to my graph, you will see it is currently running. Uh, if we keep refreshing it, so as you can see, this is success. So our DAG ran successfully. Now there are other options such as like failed, queued, removed, restarting, and all of the different statuses that you can track if you want to do that. So this is what makes Apache Airflow a very popular tool because you can do everything at one place. You don't have to worry about managing these things at the different places. So at one single browser, you will be able to do everything. So all of the example that you see it over here are just basic templates so if i go over here and check on to example complex you will see a graph which is this complicated right you will see a lot of different things so we have like entry group and then entry group is uh, dependent on all of these different things so graph is pretty complex so 
you can create all of these complex pipeline using airflow now one of the project that you will do after this is build a twitter data pipeline now twitter api is not valid anymore but you can always use different apis available in the market for free and then create the same project so i'll just explain you this course so that you can have the better understanding so i have defined the function as run twitter etl and the name of the file is twitter etl right uh, this is the basic python function so we are what we are really doing is that extracting some data from the twitter api doing some basic transformation and then storing our data onto amazon s3 now this is my twitter dag.py so this is where i define the dag of my airflow okay so as you can see it over here we are using the same thing from airflow import tag then from python operator i'm using the python operator because i want to run this particular python function which is run twitter etl using my airflow dag okay so i first define the parameters which is like the who is the owner start time emails and all of the other things then this is where i define my actual dag so this is my dag name these are my arguments and these are my description so you can write whatever you want now i define one task so in this example i only have one task so python operator i provide the task id python callable i provide the function name now this function is i import it from the twitter etl which is the second file uh, this one so twitter etl from twitter etl i import the run twitter etl function and i call it inside my python operator so i call that function using my python operator and then i attach it to the dag and then at the end i just provide the run etl now in this case if i had like different operators such as i can have like run etl1 run etl2 something like this okay so i can do something like this run etl1 run etl2 and then i can create the dependencies also so run etl1 run etl2 so this will execute in sequence manner so once this executes then this will execute this and this so i just wanted to give you the good overview about the airflow now if you really want to learn airflow from scratch and how to install and each and everything i already have one project available and the project name is the twitter data pipeline using airflow for beginners so this is the data engineering project that i've created i will highly recommend you to do this project so that you will get complete understanding of airflow and how it really works in real world i hope this video was helpful the goal of this video was not to make you master of airflow but to give you the clear understanding of basics of airflow so after this you can always do any of the courses available in the market and then you can easily master them because most of the people make technical things really complicated and the reason uh, i started this youtube channel is to simplify all of these things so if you like these type of content then definitely hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the like button thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video